Hello there YouTube. This is the beginning of my mini bench grinder. This piece I bought and to cut it off make it shorter was quarter inch. It's also quarter inch shaft. It's not exactly. If you measure with a micrometer it probably would not be. Even this, this motor was made in Canada. So you don't know if they use metric or not. But what I did was you can find this tubing in hobby stores. Uh, you might find a piece of junk laying around, quarter inch brass tubing. What I did was, there is a flat spot on the shaft of the motor. Use this instead of my finger. There's a flat spot on the shaft of the motor. I also ground a flat spot on this shaft. This turned out to be the same size. That way, when the JB weld is in there, the, I used the quick stuff so it would cure real fast. It will make it so it's not likely to spin. What I did when this was curing before it was totally hard, I spun this. Because I have my Variac, which I can spin it in any speed I want. So I spun this and kept something out here. Had a screwdriver out here, plastic. And I kept bumping this and running it. You wouldn't want to do it on a fast speed and fly apart on it because it's not cured. But I've got this pretty good tolerance. It's not going to be off too far. That's a lot of shaft to hang off a motor. I gave ten dollars for these stones. There's this one. I got these at Harbor Freight. Then you have this one, which is tapered. I'm also thinking about taking some emery paper, because I have it in the sheets, not on the roll. And using contact adhesive and making this like a sander out here. You like the side of your grindstone. These are pretty spendy for ten bucks. But they'll last you a long time if you use it just for small hobby stuff. Then you got your little screw, little cup type washer. So it goes on here and holds it nice and tight. But before this is fully cured, I'm going to add a layer out here and make this really thick. I'll put some masking tape here so I don't get it in the shaft. And I'm going to coat this with a lot of the epoxy. Then what I'll do is it's running, I'll use it kind of like a lathe. I'll get something in here and I'll smooth this down so it's nice and tapered. In here and try to bring it up on here a little more so it makes it a little more solid. This won't be run at a high speed. So it's not going to be anything I don't think will fly apart. This, this stuff ought to hold it. It's spliced about right here, not quite in the middle. So there's like three eighths of an inch of this shaft inside of here. What I like was this turned out to be about the same size. So when I coat this, this is going to be pretty solid. So enough for that. I'll show one quick thing why before I get it on a bracket. Some of these motors had a screw here and one over here, which I have one like that. I don't like that. I like this one here and this one here. It'll be make a nicer bracket. I do like the color of this. This is an old style turquoise. If I can read it upside down, anybody else can. White sewing machine. I know it's made in Canada. Nice little motor. They do have a fan in them. You can see a fan in there, fan blade. They do have a fan. So they do air cool. So we'll stop the camera here and get on with the progress. Okay, we put the epoxy on here. And while we do grind this and sand this off, we're going to tape this off temporarily because this is the vent for the fan. It will, you don't want to suck all that dust in there. What we did was, before it was fully cured, the stuff dries quick. We kind of shaped it here, just to get an initial shape. Then we'll take some sandpaper and we will actually shape this so it's smooth. I'm just over to where the shaft is. There's a flat. I'm just over, so I don't want to take much of this off because this comes off that tubing and goes onto the flat spot of the shaft. So that'll be another holding spot. 
This will have to cure about 24 hours before I can ever use it, but I can still work on the rest of the stuff today. So I can still shape this. Once this is hard enough to where I can shape it, I'll take like some memory paper or something, and I'll just get the shape to it. That way it's less work when it's fully cured. And enough of that. Okay, here's the finished product. This went pretty fast. I could not get any luckier for a base for this. This is a heat sink out of a house stereo, like a boom box. It had your computer fan on there. And then your power modules went here, where well, the heat sink does, that takes the heat out. So, this motor will get warm. Well, now it's on aluminum. It even has the little feet. I could not have gotten any luck here. I couldn't get a lock washer on the bolt, but the way the aluminum is chewed up where the drill vent went through, I'll keep an eye on it. It's pretty tight. I don't want to strip them little screws. There it is. I even put some Sharpie marker on here, so that's nice and black. But I tapered all this. It's been about, I don't know, about three hours. A TB quick weld, not fully cured. I never read the package. It's a quick weld. It's been several hours. It's hard. Got a little angle wheel on here. And what we'll do is we'll show just a little bit of it in action. Got my variac up there. These are diamond wheels. See if we can adjust the light a little bit different. more speed. Oh, I've had it wound out. I'll take off one. It needs to be hooked down to something else. And it hasn't gotten warm, this 
a little bit. It probably never will get hot if you don't run at super speed. But you could use the foot pedal off the sewing machine. I do have all that foot pedal mechanism that controls the speed. I may tape these, I may just leave them alone. I squeeze these with a small pair of vice grips. I don't trust those crimper pliers for these butt connectors. I smash these down with the vice grips. I may tape them and I may not. Because you know if you tape it's just going to get all icky, sticky, gooey. And I'm the one using it. I do recommend safety on stuff, but I may not tape those. I'm not afraid to touch them. But I did read on this again. It says USA, but it also says Canada. Now, I think I'm sure because this came off a sewing machine you couldn't get parts for anymore. And it's probably what the sewing machine shop said. Where the parts were made. But that's the end of this little video. Aluminum heat sink. Thank you. Old house stereo. Don't throw stuff away with ripping it apart. Take a hammer if you have to. Somebody throws away an old boombox with stereo if you have to. If you have to use a hammer like I did on parts of it, it was shot. I just took a hammer to parts of it. Rip it apart and see what's in there. I ended up with a nice fan. I just can't remember the voltage. It is 12 volts. And a nice 12 volt fan. You can always save the connector off the circuit board, too. I just chopped the wires, wired to what I'm going to use it for, but there's another tip there. Let me throw something away like that. Take it apart. Use a hammer. Use a chisel. Just work your way slowly into it till you see the good stuff. Make it whole and look down in there and see what's worth keeping. But that's the end of that. I made this entirely too long, I think. I haven't even kept track of it on the clock. I usually write down each little part before I hook them together. But, thanks for watching. Okay, one last little bit before the video is over. I cut these out of 120 grit emery paper, which is emery cloth. You rip this and rip like cloth. And I use contact adhesive. What you do on that, it tells you on the directions. Spread it on both parts, let it dry about one or two minutes. Make sure it's still sticky. Don't let it dry. You can always, if it does dry on you real fast, it's hot out, just put a small amount on. Or use a stick, wear gloves, don't get stuff on your fingers. Stick it on there. Let it dry for a few minutes. It's been drying for about five minutes, so we are going to see how this works for. than buying stone. Plus I get the, the use of the side of this which was just metal. This stone seems to be a little more off balance than the other one. This stuff's cheap made. It's gonna walk around on me. I may just put screws down in the bench it doesn't matter to me, my work job. I may just put some screw holes in my favorite spot if I'm not using it. Just take the screws out. Try just a little more speed. About 50 volts. up this way where it shoves down, always go away from you. Always have your stone going away from your work. Don't ever do that. You shove that in there with that paper, you grab that out of your hand, it's probably sticking you. Not to be a lecturer, but you have to promote safety. This is the safest tool to make, but...
find my favorite spot to use it right here. Looks like we're going to angle. And I'll just put some screws down there. It's my desk. I can do what I want with it. This is a real hard rubber. This is a dark army green when I got it. When I got it, you can tell inside. It's been painted in it. It's actually, I call it an Alice Chalmers orange, I think is what it was. But it's a big desk. I've shown it in some of my videos. It's got plenty of wear on it. It's a good work desk. So I may just put some screws in there. They're just real small. It's not that big of a hole. Use the smallest screws I can find so it doesn't tear it up so bad. But that's the end of this how-to video. Now, I don't think I'd ever want to work with it up there. Thanks for watching, YouTube.